Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. It's good for me to be back. Uh, you, some of you may know I've been off for at least four months. I haven't made a video since then. I uh, actually stopped painting and uh, from a relapse of my cancer and uh, it's taken me about uh, four months to uh, get over it, uh, get myself uh, recovered again and in, in uh, remission and to process of relocation from my house where I have my studio to an apartment where I have a much smaller space. What you see here is only about 50 square feet and uh, so I'm trying to uh, use this as my new uh, art and video studio. So I want to thank all of you who have uh, been there for me and been sending me good thoughts and kind words of encouragement and uh, stayed with me through this uh, whole process. It's been quite uh, quite challenging to get through and uh, so hopefully this is going to be better and I can uh, have a little less space to take care of and a much smaller home for me and my wife to handle and uh, uh, we'll see how this works. Anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, probably begin now focusing only on watercolor in my uh, painting of YouTube sessions. I uh, apologize to you who have been looking at me uh, for oil paintings. I probably may do some oil painting but it's going to be in our art studio here in the complex where I live. I won't be videotaping any of that, uh, but I'm going to be only videotaping watercolor because I only have a small space here and I don't want to have the solvents and stuff in this apartment. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's what my videos will look like from now on. So today I'm going to try to just kind of get back in shape. I haven't painted since uh, March 17th when I had to cancel my uh, last video broadcast and I really apologize for that. but. Uh, it was just uh, my body just stopped working. It was reacting to the cancer. So uh, I think I'm in much better shape and uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to keep painting and keep sharing my videos for quite a while longer. So uh, we're going to do a, a watercolor scene today of just a very simple um, <clears throat> rocks and waterfall um, scene that you might find out find in any place out in the, in the Rocky Mountains and maybe in Carolinas, uh, a lot of places around the U.S. where we have scenes like this. And I'm going to practice some of my uh, use of the, uh, the, the uh, credit card to do uh, scrape outs for rocks. It's called scrivito, I think it's pronounced, uh, where you actually take a, something and scrape something out. It's Italian for uh, uh, scraping out. And uh, it's a great way to make some rocks. Uh, you know I follow uh, Sterling Edwards and I use his palette and paints and brushes. and. Uh, I uh, just was watching some of the videos that he's made on this particular subject. I thought I'd like to try that. That would be a good refresher for me and a good way to kind of get back into uh, painting for you. So uh, anyway, that's all I had to say. Uh, you probably noticed I've lost some weight. I've probably lost 20 pounds in this uh, four months ordeal. And uh, so I'm hoping I'll get uh, stay healthy now and stay in remission for as long as possible. So let's get going. And I'm going to zoom in here on my uh, <coughs> palette now or on my uh, easel and uh, the space will remind you of the one I had before. It's almost identical. I've taken about the same amount of space. Um, what I want to do first is take you through the palette and the paints and again it remind you of what we're using here today. So um, this is my palette, <coughs> Sterling Edwards palette and I have my uh, bristle brushes, a medium and a small brush here uh, that I have available. I have a couple of flats, a one inch <coughs> and a half inch flat. I have a three rounds. I have a number 12, number 8 number four and I have a uh, number six script liner that I'll be using and uh, I may not use all those brushes but I got them available and uh, I'm gonna go around the palette and explain the paints to you. I actually have my palette set up so you can actually see the paints and see the colors and see the names on most of them here. I think you can see that <coughs> and uh, so I'll be doing I'll be using this setup here from now on with my watercolor painting and uh, but I'll go around and read these off to you case you can't read them. This is the order. These are Holbein transparent watercolors and uh, this is Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep Blue, Prussian Blue, Permanent Violet, Hooker's Green, Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Yellow Lemon. So that's the colors. Um, got my uh, sketch up here. It's a very basic sketch. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, there's not much to it. Um, just a few marks where some of the big rocks are going to go. And uh, I'm going to use my, 
a big brush here. We're going to get some water on this and, and wet it down. We'll do. We'll start doing wet into wet painting to start with, and uh, we'll let that get some really nice soft textures on here for us. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to just kind of coat this with clear water right now, and uh, we'll get going on this thing. see that pretty well. I may have to adjust my setup here some as I get going. I don't know how this is going to look or how the edited version is going to look, but uh, I do have a lot less space. I have to stand closer to the uh, cameras and uh, I don't know how the sound is going to come across. I actually have a big air conditioner behind my pallet here that uh, runs for the apartment and uh, <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to make a lot of noise. Uh, but I don't know yet, so we'll see how that works. Okay, I'm gonna let that set in for set for just a minute. I'm gonna go over here to my palette and mix up some some colors. I'm gonna take some uh, some of this burnt sienna here, <clears throat> get it out. It's a good rocky color um, of the kind of colors I'm looking for and uh, for these rocks. And uh, I'm gonna get some uh, my put a little bit of my purple in it, permanent violet rather, to kind of tone it down and. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, my blue in it uh, and to tone that down even more. So uh, we'll use these colors here to start with. I'm going to put a little blue in the sky and, uh, and uh, we'll get going on this thing. I'm going to go back and put some more water on before I do that. I want to try to keep my one, one of my uh, water containers here is uh, I use for dirty water. One is to try to keep it clean. I try to keep it clean as long as I can. So I'm going to go back now and get some more clean, clear water and touch up this paper again because it. I'm in a hot room here. This is really not very big. It's. Uh, I do have an air conditioner vent above my head, but uh, I don't feel any air coming in right now. Um, I'm going to open another door here. I have a sliding door that might add a little more cool air or let some of the hot air out maybe. Anyway. Okay, so uh, this has got a lot of water on it. It's not totally soaked, but it's pretty wet. And uh, so I'm going to start working these uh, colors in. I want to put the sky in first. Uh, we're going to put just a little bit of maybe this royal blue here. Whoops, that's, vo that's violet. Sorry. <clears throat> Can't even remember the colors of my palette here. Uh, there's some blue. The uh, royal blue. I'm sorry, not royal blue, it's Prussian blue. Prussian blue. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can put a little bit up here. Because I paint in a vertical manner, these colors do tend to run right down the paper. So I have to be a little more careful than somebody who paints flat. Um, I know you may notice that uh, a lot of watercolor painters paint flat and uh, on maybe a 15 degree sur uh, surface. Um, I like to paint on a vertical uh, surface and uh, it does have a little more challenge to the uh, paint because it tends to, to run a lot more um, and you have to work at it a little better to keep it from running into areas that you don't want. Some of these areas I don't mind if it overlaps. Uh, in the waterfall here in the middle, I, uh, I don't want it to run down too much. Uh, we will be putting some colors in that waterfall, but right now I want to try to stop that running by just blotting it with paper towel, and uh, that should stop the running. All right, let's go back and get now some, uh, take a little bit of my um, Cad lemon yellow here. <clears throat> I'm going to mix it with this, this Prussian blue that I have, and uh, I'm going to get some colors here that we can use for uh, use for the trees in the background. And I'm going to probably add even a little bit of my uh, burnt sienna to that as well to give myself a little bit of a a grayed down green, so it's not quite as green. Now this has got to be a little thicker color, uh, not quite as runny. 
um, if you look at the palette and you see you can run your finger through it like that and it doesn't leave a mark, that means it's really runny. And that's what I put on here for the sky. This is, should be a little thicker here. If I run my finger through, it's still not thick enough. I want it to not leave a, I want it to leave a track in there so that you can actually see where my finger was when I went through there. So I'm putting more paint, less water, more paint, less water, and see if this works. Okay, you see that? That means it's a drier paint, has less water in it. Now this, this paint I can put on top of this where it's already wet and it won't cause a big blossom. So let's try that and see if it works. That's the theory. So I'm going to put some trees up here, uh, just very lightly. And uh, this is going to be above the waterfall in the background here. And uh, because this, this uh, paint is much thicker, has less water in it, and I can actually take some of the water out of my brush by tapping the brush on this uh, my, my uh, soaking pad over here, which is made up of a roll of toilet tissue wrapped with uh, paper towel. Uh, come back here and put a few more trees in in the background here, like this. Change the color, pick up some more blues maybe, pull it, put some dark, darker blue in here. and. Uh, do that, maybe add a few more browns, uh, pull some more of this in because these trees do get, have some brown in them and some uh, darker colors. This one I'm going to go back over here and sort of, I don't want these to be the same size, same height, same width, connect a few together and that sort of thing, okay? Over here, we'll put a few more in. Maybe there's some more that's really coming up over here, touching off the sky. I want to leave some holes, skies in the hole, holes in the sky there. That's what I'm trying to say. And just this one-inch brush. It's all just very, just tap it very lightly, and you can get these beautiful painting strokes that look like pine trees. That's the top of the waterfall. <clears throat> Okay, so let's get that cleaned out. All right, that looks pretty good. This is, this was very wet while ago. It's drying out because it's so warm in here. Um, and I'm gonna use this to uh, start putting in some of my rocks over here. I need more paint. Use a mixture of my uh, burnt sienna and my umber to get a darker color and add a little bit of my greens out here on top of that. And uh, so you can see the colors I'm getting there. Here I'm going to come over and do the same kind of thing with some some of my browns. Let me throw some violet in there and come back and maybe get some blue. When this paper is wet, it actually soaks this, actually stains the paper and actually gets in and soaks the paper. So you end up with multiple colors here where you layer these on top of each other. And when you do the uh, scraffito scraping with the credit card, multiple colors will come out because you've put multiple colors on the paper. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of mixing up the colors, adding some purples, and uh, it just looks kind of like a blob right now. Uh, but I want to show you this has got it. You can see this is really, I see my lights are causing this to reflect a lot. I may want to reposition my lights here after a while or maybe the next painting uh, just to minimize that that glare that is coming back into the cameras. The lights are just slightly above the camera here in this particular studio that I have and uh, 
I'm not crazy about that right now because I am looking at a monitor behind me here and I see the reflections that you're seeing here which are too bright. Um, so I need to probably change the angle of my light here, uh, which I can do, it's not a problem, it's just it won't work on this particular uh, painting because I don't want to stop and adjust my lights while I'm video recording. Uh, okay, so this one we're going to keep continuing to put some more of this different colors in here, pull it down. One thing, these colors should appear on both sides. Um, one thing I was reminded of when I listened to Sterling Edwards video was that typically a waterfall comes through a, a uh, rocky area like this and it's the same rocky area on both sides. The waterfall has just been able to cut a path through there. So if you make these side green and this side blue, it's not going to look like they came from the same strata of rock. So to, to make that happen you want to repeat those colors on both sides and you want to have some of the same color over here that you got on the other side and you want to make sure that you follow through with that otherwise you're going to have uh, colors that are kind of inconsistent and going to look funny uh, so we don't want funny looking colors okay so I've done a lot of that I'm going to take some of this and see if I can get some soft edges now it's so another good use for this particular brush is to uh, use clear water with it. You've got to get it good and clean first, but uh, you can use clear water and uh, and then these edges where you see here, this is, real, this is rough edges right here because the paper's dry. But I can come in with just clear water and I can start softening those edges, so, some of those edges, so they actually will flow together with uh, what's below it. And you can change the the look and feel of that whole thing by just adding some some uh, soft edges in there which is what I want to do when we get down here toward where the water comes down from the waterfall this area is going to have some soft edges in it uh, so anyway that was that's that particular brush I'm going to save it for my uh, making soft edges I'm going to go back and get this larger brush here and uh, see if I can uh, continue this down I'm going to mix a little of my blue with my um, burnt sienna. When I do that I'm going to start getting a gray. That's what I want to start coming up with here. Some of these colors are should start lightening up a little bit in some areas as I come down and because uh, they're getting more foam and uh, so forth from the water. So it should lighten up a little bit. That may be too light but um, anyway I'm going to let that get lighter. This is going to get darker over here. I'm going to put a few more basic undertones here. Um, and you can even use this brush, this paper. If you got, got something that looks too dark, you can actually come in and take this brush and actually carve something out like that. It just picks it up. It just picks the paint up. Part of that is the brush itself because it's bristle, but part of it is because we're using Fabriano Artistico 300 pound cold press paper, which is very, very forgiving and very easy to work with. Okay, so this is losing its shine a little bit. That has lost its shine. So the deal with this with this credit card scraper, it's the same as using the back of your uh, brush to like scrape in uh, tree, tree trunks, that sort of thing. Um, if you get it just right, you will scrape the paint out. If you're too early, it won't scrape any paint out. It will just turn turn dark. You'll get a dark a dark result. If it's just right, it will turn white from the paper underneath. So let's see. We're going to take this plastic card now. We're going to hold way down low on it so that we bend it like this. Put a lot of pressure on it. So we're using it to make these rock surfaces look very realistic. Wipe that off over here. Let's see what we got going over here. We got some of the same stuff we can do over here. Make big scrapes like that. And all of a sudden you're getting plenty of surface area that looks like it's rocky. 
some of it looks too distinct. It looks actually fake. It looks like it's, you know, I did that on purpose, which I did. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use my small brush, light brush, and I'm going to soften some edges up here. If you don't like the look of that rock, just come up and repaint some of it and, uh, and leave it go with that. Over here, this is not too bad. I think I want a few more lines to delineate some specific rock faces here, maybe even a little more dark. Some more dark down here in some areas. Uh, okay. All right, so it's enough of that for now. Let's go back here and see if I can uh, finish up a little more at this top. I want to put a few more uh, I'm going to get my, I'm going to leave this brush for softening edges. I'm going to get this one inch uh, nylon brush and I can do the same kind of things with it that I do with the bristle brush. It's just that the, the bristles are much finer and they make a much smaller mark when I try to paint in something like a tree or whatever. Um, get some colors here. This. This doesn't have a lot of water in it right now. I've got a very loose mixture. There, I picked up some more water. Okay, take some of the water out of that brush. Pick up a little more and see if we can put a few more. So these are some smaller trees I'm just putting here at the top of the falls. Um, you know, I'm going to even overlay some of the trees I have with some of these. So you can see there's a, another layer actually of trees that is here and uh, I don't want to do too much of it because I don't want you to particularly look over here. I don't want you to try to uh, spend a lot of time looking here. I want to try to get these rock faces in over here and uh, so I'm going to use this method to do it and get some uh, my uh, permanent violet and uh, So I'm trying to amplify these just a little bit down here to where they kind of highlight the rocks below them. And along with that, I'll use my soft brush or my bristle brush to soften some of these edges and uh, kind of tie that together. Same idea over here. We want to uh, pull in some of these darks. I'm not using my Payne's Gray. That's the color I was needing here. I've been, I've been avoiding Payne's Gray. It has a very dark bluish color to it. And uh, I use it for some of these trees and, and bottoms of these trees. It really darkens things up quite a bit. Um, let's get that back on here. Okay, so let's see. Now coming down here, I want to try to highlight some rocks, the, the bottoms of rocks. The bottom of one rock will highlight the top of the rock below it. So I'm helping define this rock below by putting a rock on top, or by putting this dark value on top and then blending it with my blending brush. So you can see how that works. <coughs> and it, it gives a nice texture and, and let some of that run together. I don't want it to be all hard edge in there. I want some soft edge. Okay, so that's a nice rock. It shows like there might be an outcropping here of the, of the rock below it. Um, and uh, so let's just come down here and see if we can put a few more uh, scrapes in and uh, a few more definitions of rock here, like that, and this is kind of, okay, and maybe some of this will have some um, soft edges here as well. As these rocks kind of blend together, they do have some soft edges in them, and uh, so it looks like a pretty good substantial set of rocks over here. I'm going to put just a little bit of color in here. It looks too 
fakey for me. All right. All right, we're coming down pretty nicely here. Um, I don't know if I can do any more scraping here or not. Let's see. Okay, that made a little change in it. I got too much heaviness on this, and I think on the corner. But um, I'm going to leave it like that. This one, I'll do the same over here. Okay. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I'm, I'm probably putting too much effort in these rocks in the back because I really want you to look down here. The center of interest should be further down here. So I'm going to uh, probably stop on those for now and I may come back and touch them up. But right now I want to leave that as it is. And uh, I'm going to come in with a little bit of a, a darker color here for some of these areas. I want this rock here to sort of get some Payne's gray in there. Let me stick this guy out here in the in the water, over the water. Um, and I want this to sort of have a bit of a where the water is actually coming over this. And uh, my paper is really almost totally dry now, so uh, anything I do where I need water, I'm going to have to put a little water in here in some areas to uh, get some of the textures I'm looking for. Um, let's take a little bit of this uh, cobalt blue here and see if we can put in just a few areas that look like they might be coming down in this waterfall and then to soften it up I'm going to use my one inch blender. Some of it's softening already because the paper's a little wet up there but I'm going to make this a little softer with some clear water because they've got clear water in this brush I can actually pick that paint up and, and move it a little bit so it's changing the look of that. Uh, down here I want this to have a little blue in it as well so that's coming down this mountain very nicely. Okay, it's not a bad looking picture when I look behind me at the monitor. I gotta get some more paper towel here. All right, so this area down here, I want this, I'm gonna put some clear water in here. Um, I'm gonna wet it down again. I'm gonna come back and add some more of this gray color that I've, I've been working with over here. and. Uh, See if I can get a little bit of that uh, sort of grayed down using burnt sienna and uh, my uh, blue over there, Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, one of the blues. Any of them will give you a grayed down color. And I'm just going to kind of put some of that in here and let it get soft and probably too, too dark, but let's put it in and uh, it will lighten up because um, have a lot of water in it um, and, the, and the paper's a little wet so uh, we want that to kind of merge together. Some of these areas can be a little darker maybe right in here to highlight another rock face that's sitting there and uh, again let's take this brush and see if we can merge some of that together Okay, so I'm getting into this area that's got the, uh, is at the bottom of this rock face here. Okay, and again, clear water in this brush and just sort of soften these edges because you don't want it to be really hard on it. This has to be kind of misty and foggy and uh, what you want to be showing down here in the bottom. Get a color in here that's okay, something like that, and then come back and soften a little bit of it, take some of the hard marks out, leave some of the 
edges in there. Okay, that'll work for now. I'm just going to let this sort of merge together here. Okay, so it looks really foggy and uh, misty there, which is what the look I'm trying to get. Okay, let's go over here and see if we can do a little more work on these uh, rocks in this area. See, I think I'll go back here and put a little bit more. I gotta get some more dark. That's not dark enough. Trying to put the colors in. lighter and then you work your way to the dark color so you start with light and move to dark I think I need my smaller brush here and this kind of needs to be either rough or soft along here um, along the side of this waterfall so maybe it's easier to make it soft I don't know let's see have a pretty hard edge right there. And this all this rock here is out sticking out over it, uh, even more over the uh, the water than the uh, uh, the other uh, than these rocks. So I want to make these more prominent down here. So I'm going to start putting in some more colors, some more darks in here. Got a lot of green in that color. I'm not crazy about that green. Let's see if I can get that out of there and put in some more blue. A little dark blue in here maybe to uh, separate a couple of rocks. Want this to be dark here, there. Okay, and uh, merge it together. If you put this brush on it, just sort of soften it up a little bit. You'll end up getting these uh, nice looking soft putting clear water over here right now. It's got a t little bit of a tone in it, but uh, I want to wet this down so I can get some more uh, distinction in these rocks and maybe get a little more multicolor in them. Um, okay, let's see. Let's come back here and put a little more of this uh, purple in. A little bit more of that in my palette here. I want to sort of echo these colors that are over here. And some more burnt sienna in here to echo those colors. If you mix those together, you'll get the uh, effect of it soaks into the paper, and then when you scrape out with the uh, credit card you'll be getting multiple multiple shades I mean this right here you cannot do that with a brush uh, it just is impossible with a watercolor brush and paint to do that uh, it only happens because you're scraping paint off paint underneath has had a has had a chance to soak into the paper and then you come back on top of it after it dries a little bit and scrape that off this here, some of that you could get with a brush by doing a, a fast uh, brush stroke like that, but it won't look exactly like that either. So uh, the, uh, the idea is to kind of make this a very unique type of surface that, um, that you can't get any other way except using the uh, Scrafito method with the credit card. Okay, um, let me go. I'm going to get my uh, little uh, <clears throat> one of these little brushes here. Start looking at some really some dark areas here where we want to put some some uh, lines of demarcation here to kind of split some of these rocks apart here, so we have a little more uh, distinct variations going on here, like that. Um, use my brush and smooth a little bit of that out so it's not quite so potent. 
and uh, over here we might find another I can outline the top of a, another rock here just like that and I'm using my brush here I can soften the top of that and I get a nice hard edge that defines this rock underneath here like this let's put a few cracks in this rock let's pull this over here like that okay and uh, just soften those a little bit so they're not quite so strong when you put this dark paint on the paint has to be thick because um, you don't want it to blossom on you uh, but you want it to uh, stick and the only way to do that is to have the paint very thick but when you do that the paint is also very dark so um, you want now here I'm getting into where this is wet you see how that was already blossoming right there uh, all right so now this is ready almost ready for some scraping let me put a few more darks on this other side while we're let I want to let this dry come back over here and put a few more um, defining marks over here that can kind of help define some more rocks in this area and use the brush to kind of soften those edges on top leaves a harder edge on the bottom and you're just defining a whole whole bunch of rocks over here that big rocks that this one comes down like that okay so I have a lot of things that look like rocks in here go back and get a little more of my Payne's gray a little bit of my blue Let's straighten this out this needs to be flatter I think be hanging out there like that this one over here a little bit more now this is where it's wet over here so when I put this brush in there it starts bleeding immediately you can see it these over here because this is dry it's not bleeding all right let's get my scraper out and see what we can do with some rocks in here I don't like the way this this edge of this I don't know if it's because I'm putting too much pressure on the edge or what but it, it tends to be scraping in an uneven manner it, it, it scrapes the corners harder than it scrapes the uh, sides maybe it's because I got such a flimsy uh, card here I don't know but I'm practicing this is sort of getting me back reoriented into my uh, watercolor painting skills I haven't painted for four months so this is the first time I've had a brush in my hand and uh, so I want to uh, kind of relearning some stuff here and uh, all right I'm gonna get this uh, over here I want to soften this up a little bit more still want this fogginess to look around here this looks this is too hard an edge right here I think it's soften so I just use some kind of clear water and uh, soften that put some uh, this brush has a little bit of dark in it you probably can't even see that um, I don't like how this turned out over here I'm just going to kind of scrub that out and uh, come back and put some more definition in there with my brush um, again it's the paper and this bristle brush that lets you do that if you don't like the looks of that just cross it out scrape it out and come back and put some more uh, color in there which is what I'm going to do right now I'm going to get some of my 
darker Payne's gray, a little bit of my violet, a little bit of my burnt sienna. We'll come in here and see if we can define some more rockiness here that's uh, maybe down here. Let's see. Find a rock that kind of sticks out there. One that sticks out here. Let's put a couple over here that kind of pull up that way and soften these edges on top, sort of pull this together. And this will give just a little bit of fuzziness. Okay, getting about done here. There's not a whole lot left to do. Um, I kind of want to put in some more areas that look like they might be some rocks in here. This corner, I want it to be kind of good and dark. So I'll just kind of leave some uh, areas here open and uh, again use my uh, this bristle brush blender to uh, blend some of that out. So let's see here, having trouble seeing rocks where they don't exist. That's part of the artistic part of the challenge that you have to be able to see something that doesn't exist and I'm having a little trouble with that right now and uh, I want to define a rock below here like that and uh, try to make it so that the this rock above kind of blends right into it I've got some strata here. I've got some similar colors from over here um, that match over there. Um, I guess I made that almost too distinct. Okay, I think that's going to be about all I'm going to do there. But down here, I'm going to put in a little more darks. Um, and uh, maybe right in here, let's see. Let's put another little dark wedge of some kind to uh, delineate a, another rock face of some kind back there. Okay, um, in here, I'm gonna see if I can put in a, something underneath that looks like this is a, another rock that's sort of jutting out into the waterfall. I don't want to duplicate what's above it. Um, try to make some subtle differences in it um, so I don't have just one rock follow on top of another but I do have some distinction in there that uh, you can tell these are different rock faces okay so that's getting down to the point where we're going to start getting out our script liner here um, although I did want to put some other there were a couple of trees I think I want to put a couple of trees in here somewhere I'm going to get my half Put a few few trees in there. Like that. Some show some trees are kind of growing out on these rocks here. Um, a little closer, a little darker. Um,
like that. Maybe there's another, let's put a couple of uh, little scraggly things here that uh, go up like this. Something like that. Now we're kind of just putting in some just kind of finishing details here that kind of sort of help tell the story that where this is. Maybe one a couple, one or two over here. Maybe there's one that's sort of anchored right in here really well, and he's sort of going up this way and got some branches on him that are. Sort of like that. I think I'll just run him up. Run him right off the top of the paper here. And uh, something like that. And as Bob Ross would tell you, don't leave him alone. Give him a little friend over here or somebody that's sitting there beside him that's maybe smaller and whatever. All right, um, I'm doing that. I want to throw in a few things like some splatter in here. I want some, uh, loosen things up with a little splatter. This is still wet. Uh, I haven't used my hair dryer to dry anything today. It's just let the, uh, the uh, air in this 50 square foot rectangle I'm standing in to, uh, kind of do its thing. Okay. Uh, and over here, let's see. I'm about finished. How long have we been going here, folks? My, my clock, 45 minutes. Yeah, longer than I thought. Okay. Well, um, take that, take some of this. Put a few blue spots in here. We're going to help tone this change the tone a little bit in this area and uh, again I'll use my brush to uh, thin those out kind of echo this blue that's coming down up above Too blue. Let's, uh, we can soften all of that out of there, a lot of it out. Just leave it. A little bit more down here to kind of close this corner off. Here, let's take this and turn it into some foam if we can. Okay, um, I think maybe that's take a little bit of this green here and put a few of these green trees in here. All right, <clears throat> I think that's about all I can do, other than maybe sign my name. And uh, I'm going to put it right over here somewhere. Maybe I'll put it, I don't know, this is still wet, that's still wet. Uh, see what happens when I put some of this paint that's right in. Do it over here.
All right. <laughs> That's kind of a, I thought it was going to be quicker than that, but uh, anyway, I hope you like that. Hi, and uh, it's good to be back. It's good to have the paintbrush in my hand and good to be uh, getting back into watercolor painting and uh, hope you like this. I'll be uh, editing this and putting it up on my uh, YouTube channel as soon as I can. And uh, so uh, if you like this, give it a like. If uh, you want to share it with some of your friends, please share it. Give me some comments. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and uh, like to have some more subscribers. So uh, send it to your friends and ask them to subscribe. So uh, anyway, that's all I have for you today. So until I see you again next time, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye bye.